what's up everyone, I'm Billy Morrison. This is episode three of the Morrison Report for Gibson.com. And this episode is gonna be a little about home recording, home studios. I will be working in a couple of them this week on uh, a couple of different projects. And I thought we'd grab an interview with my friend and uh, co-conspirator, Mr. Steve Stevens. You can have a little look at his home studio, which um, it's pretty awesome in, ter in terms of home recording, Steve's got it dialed in. We're in my one right now, which is very small, um, but it's pretty powerful for a home, a home setup. We've got the couple of racks here, a uh, couple of Technics turntables and a rain mixer in case I get my wiggy wiggy on. Um, I actually love DJing, it's, it's a good laugh and uh, I'm getting pretty good at it. And then we have the two racks for the home studio, lots of Line 6 gear, give you real instant guitar sounds for demos. Um, we've got a DBX compressor down here, Sans Amp Tech 21, a couple of power amps, um, running through the Motu 896. It's a, a logic based system that I use, I don't use Pro Tools, I prefer Logic. This is a 72 Deluxe. Um, it's a beautiful guitar, uh, don't take it on the road because I, I don't really want to mess it up on the road but it sounds great, it's got the mini humbuckers in it and the neck's really thin, it's just a great studio recording guitar. This is a uh, early 90s, 93 Gibson Les Paul Standard. This is the first standard that I bought and I, uh, I fell in love with the Seymour JB59 combination. Now all my live guitars have that, in most of my live guitars have that combination. And this guitar, I, I love this guitar. It's been beaten and scratched and dropped and uh, dragged around the world. Right, welcome to Gibson.com and a very special interview with my friend and uh, co-conspirator, no, partner in crime, Mr. Steve Stevens. Nice to see you again, Mr. Morrison. It's nice to see you here. We've actually been working all afternoon together on a little thing, but uh, this is what happens if you don't rein it in, kids, and this is, what, this is where a home studio ends up, if you uh, just let it... Let well, it, go. it looks like home studio, but that's a washer and dryer. That's a microwave. <laughs> refrigerator. That's the fridge, right? Yeah, right there. Oh, it's, it's undoubtedly amazing. Where where do you draw the line between home recording and going to the next level? Drums, usually. Right. Don't do drums here. Um, yeah. No, no space to do drums. Um, and it's kind of nice because I'm always thinking, well, does this really sound the way I'm imagining it? So it's good to get the stuff out of here into a proper studio, and then you know what you've got. But you, would you say you've taken it to a level where you could finish a record in your house minus the drums? Yeah, you could. You've yeah. done that? Yeah, I've done that. But, but yeah. what is the future of home recording to I, you? I think eventually, like, it, you know, it'll probably all be in the box. For me, as a guitarist, I still need guitar friendly. Racks of gear. Yeah, well not yeah, so no, much just though, but there's certain pieces of gear which are really guitar friendly. API, uh, mm -hmm. mic pre's, that's the sound that's on every classic. And heads. Uh, guitar. I and mean, guitar amps, yeah. You I mean, we do use, you know, as, as when we work together, we use some plug-in, amp sims and stuff. And the fractal, which is that's, mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And especially if you're writing, because you don't want to sit around, by the time you've tweaked your amp sound, you right. forgot what your idea was. So. I think the plugins are really helpful for that. So you think eventually we'll get to you bring out an iPad and you'll just plug something in and you'll just be making records. I think like that's that. probably not too far in the future. It'd be pretty cool, right? Yeah. Especially you brought this one out. What is this? That's so cute. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, that's the Josie guitar. Let me yeah. see if I can get this. Steve's wonderful wife, Josie. I don't know whether that's in focus, but he has Josie Baby. On his Les Paul. What's the story on that one? Um, this is just a, a white standard, and um, it's uh, what I, what I like about it. It's got some bare knuckle pickups, which are um, you know a model that I uh, helped design with them. What's good for me for recording on this guitar is that it has the tone styler, which is that notched. Yeah, yeah. Tone. And okay. for recording, it's what I do like is when it's all the way out, the tone control is bypassed from the guitar itself. So it's basically just pick up through the volume control straight wow. out. So you get 
um, as pure a guitar sound as you can. And then this gives you the ability to kind of get different, it's almost like you get that Cactua thing that Mick Ronson yeah, did yeah. and get that there. Um, so it's for, for recording, this is a really good like that. I need, this, I need one of these, yeah. someone <laughs> get me one of this these is things. You, yeah, this is pretty useful. It, 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 it's not, so you can't get the, the swell. Right. But for recording, and it's great because you can remember where it was. And, and you know what? The binding is really interesting on that guitar as well. Yeah, just, this was an eBay guitar. Um, I've probably gotten probably about four or five Les Pauls off eBay. Um, <clears throat> but I like this. This is one of those mid-90s comfortable necks. I have another uh, black, oh, yeah, I saw uh, the black Custom, one. which has really got a tree trunk neck on it, which is great for rhythm. But this guy is like right in between that. It's between a 60s neck and a, and a classic you know, right. 50s. So it's great for rhythm, great for, for soloing. And, uh, That's right. They're the mid 90s. Now I have a 94 standard That's that has a right. neck that's, yeah. that's in between us. It was the first one that I changed the pickups in, and it's one of my favorites. It's really, yeah, it's really comfy and you know, um, nice frets. Just and it's around. white, which is, you know, I, I like white guitars. So, yeah. <laughs> well, Steve, I'm not going to keep you any longer, but thank you. Absolutely. And uh, you keep it here, Gibson.com. System memory crash.